Manchester Airport, the third largest airport in the UK. Every year, more than 27 million passengers pass through this busy hub. And now, it's time for an upgrade. One of the first things to strike you when you survey the buildings and the plans for the £1 billion upgrade to Terminal 2 is the sheer scale of this project. This is currently one of the largest contracts in Europe. There's five floors of the terminal. It's it's massive, basically. So you can imagine it's like a separate job. Each floor is a separate project in its own right. And Connolly's have got scaffolding for the old place. Uh, we've been on it just over 12 months and I think there's another six to eight months left. The sheer number of people and amount of materials involved, plus the safety of both workers and the general public, mean that good planning is essential. Hazard and risk reduction were the first priority and were carefully planned at the design stage and then constantly reviewed throughout the life of the project. Starts off with me and Steve, who's the Connolly's supervisor on site, and we run through every morning. He has a sit down with me for a dabs, where I'll, we'll agree between us what each lad will do. Before he even starts work, come out, tell the lads where they'll be, stairs closed off, plant moving around, everything like that. Connolly's, they'll give me a call or email me just to say, um, these are projects on site, there's an element that needs um, rectifying or access um, and then we'll just take it from there, generally with a site meeting to make sure we get all, all the info. The volume of scaffold they've got on the airport in particular is, is huge, so it can be a daily, a daily conversation. Connolly's has over 20 permanent employees on site, but there are over 2,500 workers on site in total. So ensuring that strict health and safety regulations are adhered to is vital. I don't think there's been a, an incident since we've been on there, but health and safety as a whole is always priority. As the project begins to take shape and more and more work is completed, the structure and the environment around it becomes increasingly complex. This, this particular project was a large bespoke scaffold package which had to encompass different trades on the site, so we had to enable that the scaffold was boarded at different floor levels and different platform levels and then on the top platform level it had to be fully boarded. The VCC hangar where we had to suspend the scaffold from the roof beams um, this was because the contractor needed to put in place the escalators um, below so we couldn't come from ground. Um, the main obstruction we had were the ducting, the ventilation systems and the electric cable trays and service trays. Of the challenges faced by the Connolly team, the most spectacular was having to upsail down from a birdcage scaffold to work on a giant pyramid structure on the roof below. We've built like a birdcage scaffolding with, with beams so that the lads can upsail off it. Pyramid scaffold and it cantilevers over the top of the existing terminal. So the existing terminal there's a glass triangle at the top which ties into our building. We've had to build off the roof of the extension and throw beams out on over the glass so the lads can, uh, rope access lads can drop off it. If abseiling down to work on the roof was impressive, the challenge of designing and constructing the giant retail birdcage scaffold was awe-inspiring. It had to be built in such a way that passengers could still safely use the terminal while work continued. A monster retail birdcage is what it's called, which is a double height space, it's got two escalators, it's got a staircase in. With so many trades working alongside one another and the building structure in continual development around them, scaffolding may need to go up at a moment's notice and plans can change daily, sometimes by the hour. We're putting stuff in and it's just constant motoring. I can imagine ductwork going everywhere or you've got big escalator boys. I can imagine in an airport, escalators and staircases everywhere and they're in big, chunky, double height spaces where you can't expect a sub as part of their contract to fight for a way to get 14 metres up in the air. We can go on site, everything can change one day. They'll give us a scope of works to do, and then rush jobs come in. You've got to find the men, find the designer, get the design turned round in hours. There's been that many jobs on that particular site that I don't even know how many we've done. The nature of a project like the Terminal 2 redevelopment means that timeframes are constantly squeezed with elements that would normally take months to plan and execute having to be completed in a matter of weeks or even days. I think you're looking at a 12-month project really. It could run just over, but they're trying to drag the project in three months.
Connolly Scaffolding's contract is currently worth £1.6 million, with work, moving materials and erecting scaffolding going on well into the night. Their aim is to complete the job on time and to honour their commitment to providing value for money. A team that comes on at 2 in the afternoon, works till 10 at night, they get your materials around site in them hours because sometimes it's just too busy during the day. When completed, Terminal 2 will double in size, adding 60 new retail outlets and restaurants and a further 10,000 car parking spaces. It's been a great job. It's been a great job and uh, it's been great working with Lango Rocks, but it'd be nice to, it'd be nice to go on my holidays and have a look around and think, oh, we built this. <laughs>